Good morning. This is Daniel, and we're going to talk about uh, shifting resentment. And I'd like to go over some of the notes that I came up with this morning and then kind of uh, ad lib from that. So I want to talk about, let's see if I can switch over here to my notes. Uh, resentment. Resentment keeps us in the energy it was created in and opens us up to do the same thing to another person that causes the resentment. That's what I've been feeling when I have judgment over a bad driver or someone that can't park or someone that has some negative thing that I judge. It comes back to me quicker than ever that um, if I hold resentment about how someone is being or acting or not doing or not saying, you know, it's, it's so frustrating that, you know, pretty quickly I'm going to see the same thing in myself. So this resentment, if, if you really narrow it down to uh, how it made you feel. So you have resentment because you made it feel weak or it made you feel helpless or it made you feel uh, abused or whatever the thing is, that if you can track it down to how it made you feel, then you can start to get to the solution of it. But if you just stay in the resentment, which is where your mind wants to keep you, wants to keep, wants to keep you in this um lower feeling of blaming the other person and distrust of that person and people like that person and it just starts to shut you down and shut you down and that's not really what you want that's more of what your ego of mind is okay with but it's not really you know um interested in the truth is not really interested in you expanding yourself what it's really interested in is it expanding the story and the details. So the question becomes, uh, what history do you have of being treated unfairly or unjustly? So when or where is the original cause of what you're resentful for? So you're resentful, but there's a you're resentful for something that made you feel a certain way. Why wasn't that person there for me? Well, if you go back to your childhood, there's probably an instance, whether you can remember it or not, that a person you felt should have been there for you, and maybe they should have, but they weren't. And so in dropped in this resentment, and it's it's kind of like, you know, I keep going back to the animal house scene where, you know, he's got the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder. And that devil is sort of like our ego mind. Come on, yeah, let's build up the story about this person. Let's stay in this because they should have done something. You know, it's this this voice that just kind of accumulates this story. And I don't know about you, but once I get that that voice going in my head, sometimes it's really hard to stop. It just you really got to be determined to just completely stop it. So uh, resentment is about distrust. It's about lack of forgiveness. It's about feeling powerless and also about anger. So they say that there's a couple of things going on when you have resentment is that you, this resentment is because you felt powerless. Um, somebody did something or didn't do something or said something or didn't say something and it made you feel powerless. And so you get resentful, but that feels kind of weak to you. So you go into anger and you get pissed off about it and you say, I'm never going to do this again, or I'm never going to talk to this person again, or never going to let anyone close to me again. And you develop all these conditions and then you fall back into powerlessness and then you feel weak and then you go, that doesn't feel good. And then you get angry. So it's this, this back and forth thing. And it's like this prison that it keeps you in of just being resentful. No, I don't want to forgive this person because if I forgive this person, then I'm condoning this or I don't feel like I get justification or that I get um, resolution on this. It feels like if I go to that place, then um, I'll just be even weaker than I feel right now. So you may feel that you um, need to let go of your unmet needs if you go into forgiveness and letting go of this resentment that um, you'll have to somehow just let that go and it won't be a, a thing that you'll get anymore. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, so this resentment that at least in my life, when I felt resentment, it's been sort of a shield of protection and, uh, some, uh, I didn't feel like I was supported or, you know, got my needs met at that time. And so there's this little development of resentment and it's like, 
is I can feel it kick in. It's like a little shield, a little program. Oh, run this program of protection of distrust. And uh, it's, it's supposed to help me from not getting hurt again. The problem is, is that when you're in the room of resentment, you're also in the room of distrust. You're also in the room of not being able to forgive. You're also in the room of judgment and anger and rage. And all that stuff is all existing in that room. And once you're in that room, you're just going to get more and more creative ways of expressing those feelings and those experiences. So the real solution I'm going to share with you um, after I talk about this a little bit more, but um, to just push more and more people away and just determine that you're just not going to be hurt again you know that really doesn't work it just kind of feeds into it it's, you know they they say that whatever you resist you know persists kind of thing and if you just keep on feeding that energy of well these people always do this and and i've just shut them out of my life and that may seem like it's a protective mechanism but again if you're in the energy of that it just kind of creates in, in different ways in your life. It may not be exactly with that person if you've shut them completely out, if you could do that, but it'll show up in some other way, in some other creative way. So um, you feel through that resentment that you're owed something. That's another part of it. Um, and let's say, let's say that, um, well, let's let's take me for example. Let's say uh, when I was 12, my dad was killed in a car accident. And I had a lot of resentment about why did he work two jobs? Why did I not be able to see him? You know, why was uh, such a good father taken from me? All those resentments, you know, start to be part of my psyche, part of my personality even. And it's, uh, it just becomes like uh, I'm owed something, like something wrong was done to me and I'm owed something. So how that would show up is that, you know, maybe I would steal things or maybe I would treat myself badly that, you know, I should do this for myself because, you know, I'm owed this thing. And if that, if that kind of that pattern of being owed something, you can do some pretty destructive things because all this idea that you're owed something and you're not really um, meeting the world and your relationships in a really healthy way. Um, but it does kind of keep you in this feeling of in control because when you're in resentment, you know, you can feel this. Like when you're in a resentment for this person, you put yourself up here and them down there. And a lot of times there's nothing they can do to not feel the wrath of your resentment. So it puts you a little bit more in an empowered place. But in reality, what's happening, like all these other negative emotions that you're actually being controlled by this illusion of control from your own mind. So to explain this a little bit clearer, your mind wants to be in resentment. Your mind wants to be in anger and rage and fear and worry and uh, regret and all those things. So if you latch on to that, you're actually being controlled by your mind. You think that it's feeling more powerful to you, but you are the light, you are pure consciousness that has no... Uh, need for any of those um, control mechanisms and feelings and that kind of stuff but we think it's us so we kind of grab onto it so that's kind of the the work in this is to pull yourself out of the identification of that aspect of you that wants to stay in that so now i want to give you some some tools about how to shift the resentment uh let go of the guilt and the resentment towards yourself so that means um i should have known better that kind of thing. Um, you like me, you know, like some, some of the stuff I've done in my life, I was doing the best that I knew how, or through my own unmet needs or my, through my own crossed wires, I was doing the best that I knew how. And it just kind of kept me um, here. And I did what I felt that I needed to do. And uh, I didn't really have the tools or the awareness that I have now. So that's just where I was. So it's not that I should have known better. I, there's no way I could have known better. If I was a, a young boy and I was abused or something, there's no way that I would know how to even uh, determine what the next step is or how I need to um, 
say the right thing or do the right thing. You're just, you kind of freeze sometimes. So that can be an issue with people that have had experienced uh, abuse in their life. Um, know what your needs are, know what your boundaries are. When you start to know yourself a little bit more, it's harder for people to come in, in in a way or for you to be in the same energy of resentment and distrust if you know yourself more. And, and really, I want to make sure that I'm really being clear on this. This is not about putting up boundaries of protection. It's just about knowing yourself with love, about knowing who you are, what your own needs are due to your own upbringing, your childhood and your conditioning, that this is what's really important to you. And you, you kind of say it to yourself to yourself and to other people in this way. This is just really important to me. Kind of, it's that kind of a feeling to it. So that's the way that I think about setting boundaries is just it's setting um, what my own needs are. So by doing this, you empower yourself. It's and it's the other thing is that you're um, you're accepting that this happened or that this thing you had that had this effect on you, but you're not condoning it. And if you want to go even deeper, you embrace the fact that somebody felt out of balance that they were trying to get like me back in my younger days that I was trying to get my needs met and I hurt somebody. And it's not that I'm trying to hurt somebody, but I'm just trying to get my needs met. And that may have been how this person hurt you. And, you know, I've heard lots of stories about people that have been abused or raped and things. And um, there's this need of the other person to inflict pain on another person and thereby get this feeling of power or empowerment. So there's this whole dynamic of trying to get your needs met and then people do it in some really unhealthy ways. But if you accept the idea that this wasn't done to you it, and it's um, not about the person, but it's about the act, that this, this act didn't feel good to you and it made you feel a certain way. And then we can go even deeper to that. So I'll, I'll hit that one too. Um, could there be times when you were unbalanced that you might also do a similar thing to another person? And that's the one where you kind of go, for me, I kind of go, wow, you know, I've been pretty unbalanced in my life. And there's a possibility that I might do the same thing that I hated done to me. And, but if you're the kind of person that says, I would never do that, then there's a real, um, there's a place for you to go there that you might find a way to accept the possibility that in this life or some other life that you can't uh, connect with yet, that you were even worse than that. And there's a, a real dear friend of mine, um, Ntuasua, uh, Anthony Johnson, and he talks to me about, you know, I remember us having a conversation about he knows that he was the murderer, he was the rapist, he was the, the villain. And when you get to a place that you can completely open up to that, and that there's a possibility there. And the Cloud Atlas is the movie that really kind of expresses this, but it's a hard one for the egoic mind to dive into, but it's something that I really found talking to him and embracing this idea. I don't know, it just kind of released um, the, the chains on me a little bit. I don't know what, what the feeling was, that just to realize that like there's this inside of me, there's this hope that I've never been this bad person or always trying to be a good person. And if I'm not a good person, it just would destroy me. And um, when you just completely accept that you've been a terrible person in other people's lives and other lives, that there's that possibility, you go, okay, wow, that must have sucked. That must have been hard. Wow, here I am now doing my best to be a good person and balance out that, that energy. So it's just kind of, it's accepting this reality, this truth that we're, we're all of it, all one, having the, all these experiences. And it just kind of lets me off the hook, sort of. Um, it's not who I am now, but it just kind of releases that burden of trying to be a perfect human being in one sense. So, um, what if you open yourself to the possibility of the darkest versions of you and you love those? That's the extra piece that, okay, I have been that person. Maybe I was a murderer. If I can, if I can imagine that in my mind, then it may have happened. And then if it may have happened, what's the best thing I can do? I can love myself. 
I don't condone the behavior, but I can love myself. And by loving yourself right now, you can love that person. And what a great um, healing energy that you can send out. Um, let's see. Uh, what would it mean if you did this, if you accepted some responsibility without blaming yourself and without saying, oh, yeah, I'll accept some of it. I shouldn't have been in a relationship with that person. That is a complete, sorry, that's a cop out of just saying, yeah, it's my fault for, for befriending that person. That's very surfacey taking responsibility. What I, what I invite you to do is to don't let your egoic mind um, tell you things like that. Take responsibility in the energy of it. Is there any way that the energy that you receive, the negative energy that you receive, that you were somehow in alignment or you were somehow in the same room of that? That's just something that you'll need to dispense some meditation on that um, in your most unbalanced state that you might be sort of a match to that. Let me give you an example. Somebody that doesn't really have a strong voice and doesn't feel themselves as being empowered and doesn't feel like they should ask for they want and they don't know what their own needs are and what their boundaries are, they're in the same room as a narcissist. They're not a narcissist, but they're in the same room. They're kind of an energetic match for that. So they're in an, an attraction to that. You might say it's an opposites attract kind of thing. But if you think about the room where narcissism would exist, it would exist in the same place of not feeling empowered and not feeling a strong voice and that kind of thing. So that's that's what I'm talking about there. Um, so the solution isn't to keep on pushing away and setting up more and more conditions for love and all those things. The solution is actually to go into it, to go into that feeling. I'm feeling resentment. Why? What is the feeling? Where does that come from? Where is Where is the original cause of this feeling? Now you can get to the original healing integration of what happened way before you even met this person that you're getting the resentment from. Uh, let's see. Moving towards. Okay, here's the, the last tool. And it's uh, by Teal Swan. I've mentioned this several times, but she has a book and a process called The Completion Process. But it's really uh, another form of inner child work where you go into a meditative state and you, um, you have a determination to meet the different uh, versions of yourself in your different ages and eventually go back to the earliest age that you can remember or where you might consider um, your emotional trauma or physical trauma happened, usually between birth and eight years old. And uh, you meet yourself, and I won't go into the details, but there's some great healing of going into that place and giving that child what it is that you need and, and kind of inviting them back into the safe place that you are now. But there's a lot more to it than that. So um, if you want more about this, uh, more information about this, um, you can look up Resentment with Teal Swan on YouTube. And I think there's about a 20 minute video that she talks about you know in depth um, this stuff. Um, just know that I agree with about 95% of what she says. But I also know that um, there's some work that Teal needs to do on resentment and uh, forgiveness and anger and that kind of stuff. So just take that with a grain of salt. But there's some really good um, information there. Sometimes the best people to talk about these things are the ones that are suffering it from it the most. So um, I think that's all I got for today. Um, I love you. Thank you. Bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you.